All right, set up done. So hello everyone, welcome back to another Facebook Live yoga video. <laughs> My mouth feels really tacky. <laughs> it's like a mumbled introduction. So welcome back. I hope you're having a nice morning so far and we're ready to do some more stuff. So today we're gonna work on our groins. Yes. So I feel like our groins get tight very quickly because when do we ever stretch them out? Like if we don't do anything like specific, if we don't go into a movement with groin, like a movement program with groin specifically in mind, then we don't work them, okay? So we're all very sort of like, we wanna build strength, we wanna build flexibility, we wanna do this, but we forget about our groins. In my opinion, I don't think we do much to stretch them out unless you are like really dead set on getting the splits, in which case you're probably working this area quite a lot. Either way, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna work the groin, the sort of inner thigh muscles, the adductor muscles, which are in our inner thighs and they help us bring our legs together. So if you ever go to the gym and you see those, I'm sorry if you use these, but those ridiculous um, like machines where people sit there and then they just like put their legs in and out, in and out, and it's like weighted. That's effectively the area we're gonna be working, but without like a ridiculous machine like that. Cause you don't need it. And let's be real, it looks a little bit stupid. <laughs> it looks a little bit stupid, it's a bit lame. So the only thing you're gonna need today, welcome, is a, a yoga strap, a belt, dressing gown cord, something like that. So I've actually lost my dressing gown cord. I don't know where I've put it. I've managed to lose it from yesterday, this room to my bedroom. So I've actually got a yoga strap today, a bit more professional. But you can literally use anything you have lying around the house, but we will be needing this. And you will want a bit of space today, just so you can take your legs out wide, because we're gonna be doing some wide leg stuff. So you'll see me throughout this class, like switching sides a lot, because obviously I cannot put my leg out one side because there is a radiator in the way. So I'm just gonna be moving from like back to front quite a bit, but you just ignore that. You don't need to do that. Hopefully you have enough space. So a little bit of space, a dressing gown cord or something similar, yoga strap. And if you have any injuries, please consult your doctor before doing this class. And that's it. Are we ready to work our groin? Like I said, groins get tight, so this might be a little bit eye watering, but I feel like it's gonna be good for us. So come onto your backs. We're gonna actually spend a little bit of time on our backs to prepare. There's a lot of great postures we can do to wake up these muscles. And then we're gonna work our way up to standing and we're gonna be doing some like quite, quite big postures towards the end. But first, let's just lie on the floor. Now, really helpful for today, working into the groin. We're gonna get into the hips quite a bit as well, hamstrings. So if you can, bring the soles of your feet together, let the knees fall out sideways. If that isn't comfortable, you can just have your knees bent or legs straight down the mat. But very good, uh, this position specifically to passively start working into the groin and you're gonna feel this, I think it's very nice, this sort of lovely opening across the pelvis, inner thigh muscles. So you can place the hands on the inner thighs as long as you're just resting the hands there, so at no point are we pushing the knees down or you can just take the hands either side of the body, palms up, or even rest the hands on the belly. So a lot of options for today. As long as you can find a position, you can be still in for a few moments. And then we're just gonna start how we always start, taking a couple of deep breaths, really uh, bringing the attention into the room and focusing on the sensations in the body. So it's really important that we get our head in the game before we start moving through these postures. I like to set the classes up like this. So focusing on your breath, slowing it down, inhales and exhales equal in length, and breathing through the nose if possible. For me, not possible, because I have hay fever. <laughs> but if you can, breathe through the nose. So if, you tend to, if you're a mouth breather, if you tend to breathe through your mouth, your breath is often more shallow. So breathing deeply through the nose is a great way to find that slow, steady rhythm, that sustainable rhythm that we're trying to maintain throughout this whole class. And some of the postures we do today are, are quite intense, I suppose, intense stretches, especially with our groins. <laughs> so the breath is gonna help us deepen postures. If you feel like you're on your edge, sometimes taking a few deep breaths can help you relax more. 
And the breath is also a really good measure of if you've gone too far. So if you cannot breathe in a posture, if you find the breath becoming shallow, it's a good sign you've gone a bit too far and you need to pull back. So we can use the breath as a gauge to tell us whether we should move towards something or away from it. I'm so stuffy right now. <laughs> I'm so stuffed up. Okay, so once you've found that steady rhythm, just take your attention around the body again. Just notice if anything feels tight, if you've got any tension, any injuries, and being mindful of those areas as we move throughout the class. So you are your own best teacher. I'm here to guide you through it, but you know your body best. And if anything doesn't feel right, feel free to have a rest or skip it. I'm taking a few more moments here, just really trying to relax into the shape. And then as you inhale, very slowly, as slow as you can, bring the knees together. So using the strength of the inner thighs to pull the legs closer towards one another. And then we're just gonna hug our knees into our chest and rock from side to side. So back of the head on the floor, hands around the knees of the shins to make circles and really squeezing the thighs up towards the belly as you roll, feeling any tension undo in your lower back. So nice, nice to do in the mornings, this one. Just waking up the body slowly. And then take both feet to the floor. So we're gonna start quite gently. I think the first posture is gentle and the rest pick up a bit. So just take your left leg down the mat. Gentle effort in that uh, left leg to keep the toes pulling back, toes facing the ceiling and see if you can ground down through the left calf. Take hold of the right shin, inhale, then exhale, gently squeezing right, thigh back towards stomach. So knee to chest pose. And this is a groin stretch. So we are stretching into the groin. You may feel some sensation on your inner right thigh. We don't need to be too strong in this first posture, but see if you can just keep the shoulders broad, shoulders rolling towards the mat, chin tucks in ever so slightly so the back of the neck is long. Eventually trying to close the gap between the right thigh and the tummy, but this happens over time, it can't be rushed. And if for whatever reason this is uncomfortable for your right knee, you can actually take the back of the right thigh instead of the right shin. And sometimes that can take some of the pressure out of the knee. Okay, so not much else to do apart from focus on your breath. So still keeping that steady rhythm through the nose if possible. Every exhale, maybe seeing if you can ease the leg back a fraction more. And then to work into the right groin just a little bit, and this is a very subtle movement, just gently draw your right knee to the outer edge of the right body, so we're moving it to the right, and then take a big inhale, and then as you exhale, just see if you can squeeze the right knee a little bit closer towards your armpit. So it's a very subtle movement. We've just moved the right leg towards the right, drawing the knee up towards the armpit. Slightly deeper stretch on the inside of that right thigh. Still keeping the left leg gently engaged at the moment so the toes face the ceiling. Okay, and then bring that leg back to center. We're gonna take this into a twist. So now the left leg totally relaxes. It's gonna travel with the twist. Keep hold of the right shin with the left hand and then extend your right arm out to the side, palm down. Inhale here, then as you exhale, gently guide the right leg over towards the left. Your right butt cheek will lift up off the floor and then when you're in your posture, if it's comfortable for your neck, turn and look over your right shoulder. So definitely one of the deeper spinal twists we do, as well as working into the lower back, you may feel a stretch in your right glute. Once you're in the position, just see if you can relax as much as possible. We're not engaging any muscles. 
That's the only thing we're trying to be aware of is that right shoulder. So keep the right shoulder planted. We don't want to rock too far over towards the left because then we lose that, that really nice sort of isolated stretch. Okay, then inhale back to center and then just release that right leg. Extend both legs down the mat and give your legs a shake. Right, we'll change sides, so right leg extends, gentle effort in the right foot, toes pull back, toes face the ceiling to begin with, take hold of the left shin, inhale, then exhale, squeeze in left thigh back towards the tummy. Stretching into the groin as well as the top of the left leg, and then keeping the shoulders relaxed, chin tucked in. So the upper body is not working very hard. Obviously the arms are slightly strong to help draw the left leg back, but apart from that, we really don't want any added tension there. So I think part of a, I mean, it, I don't think you can be good at yoga, but I think if you were to be, it wouldn't be getting into like the most extreme postures. It would be knowing when and how to conserve energy. So what muscles you need to be using, what muscles you don't, and being really intelligent in how you apply that. So that's one way I think, one thing, one marker of a successful yoga practice for sure. Okay, and then we're gonna bring that little groin stretch into it. So subtle movement, we're gonna draw the left knee to the outside of the body, inhale, then exhale, ease the left knee, a little bit higher up towards the armpit. Deeper stretch on the inside of that left thigh. Okay, and then we'll take it into the twist. So bring the left knee back. We're gonna hold on to the left chin with the right hand. Your right leg totally relaxes now. It'll travel with the twist. Left arm out to the side, palm down. Big inhale here, then exhale, gently guide left leg over towards the right, your left butt cheek will lift. And then once you're in your twist, you can turn and look over that left shoulder, just make sure the left shoulder stays down. One side might feel tighter, so this is my tight side, I can definitely feel this more in my uh, left hip. So just noticing these things, and then relax it. No effort anywhere and your breath is steady. Okay, lovely, and inhale, slowly come back up to center. Release that leg, we're gonna take a cat stretch. Point both feet down the mat, arms overhead length, but make yourself as long as you possibly can. So feeling that stretch, lower back, tops of the legs, shoulders, and then exhale, hug your knees into your chest and rock from side to side, making circles and keeping the back of the head on the floor. So again, in this posture, upper body is pretty relaxed. And then take both feet to the floor and then locate your strap. Okay, so here we go. Moving on to the big boy posture, second posture in. So we are gonna be using our strap now. We're gonna do the next posture twice. The first time, I suppose it's gonna be more of like a yin style thing. We're gonna be holding it a little bit longer. And the second time will make it more active. So you can have, if you're lower back sensitive, you can have your left knee bent, no problem. Otherwise straighten the left leg down the mat and gently pull the left toes back, left toes face the ceiling. So we don't need to be strong in that left leg, but a little bit of effort and then place the right foot in the strap and then lengthen the strap so the back of your right arm is on the floor and your right shoulder is rolling down, your right shoulder is not rolling forward. From here, take your left hand onto your left hip. Hamstring stretch. <laughs> so you can make it a little bit more active if you want by really working those right toes back so you bring a deeper calf stretch into it. Otherwise, Again, first time round, we can keep it quite chill. And this isn't a subtle stretch, this is quite intense. Keeping the breath steady. And 
and just holding it here for a few more moments. So I'd done a yin class once where I had to hold this for like five minutes and honestly, worst five minutes of my life. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> but there is a real like wisdom in holding these deep stretches for a while. It gives the muscles a, a real chance to release. And you might think, or uh, well, you might notice that your left calf has picked up, so see if you can just root that down. If your groin's tight, it's going to be harder to keep that left calf down. So that's a good indication of where your groin's at. We're not judging, just things to notice as we move through the practice. Okay, and now what we are going to do is we're going to take the right leg out to the right. Now, please keep your left hand on your left hip. So this is our gauge. As soon as you feel that left hip pick up, you have gone too far. So we want to keep that left hip down. We want both butt cheeks on the floor and we want to see if we can press the lower back into the mat as well. So there's a bit of a tendency for the lower back to arch in this, but see if you can keep it down. So left hand on left hip, inhale here, then exhale, here we go. Slowly take right leg out to the right. Now it doesn't matter how far that right leg comes out to the side. It doesn't make you better if you can get it to the floor. If it is on the floor, I'm gonna challenge you. <laughs> if it's on the floor, I'm gonna challenge you right this second. Check that your left hip is down and check that your lower back is flat. If these things are not happening, you need to bring that foot just a little bit higher. Okay, we can all get our foot to the floor if we allow the body to roll over to the right, which is not what we want to do. Isolating the stretch on the inner right thigh, it's not a, it's a little bit tiggly, and then hamstrings and also hip, we're opening into the hip. Opening across the pelvis, very good. And then holding it here. Now if your neck's okay, you're going to turn and gently look over your left shoulder. This is very similar to a posture we'll do later. doing really well. If it all gets a bit too much you can have a rest or you can just release the strap a bit and make the strap a bit longer. Okay and then inhale bring that leg back up to center. All right now you have a choice you can repeat the posture same length you can lengthen it or this time you can move your hand up the strap closer towards the foot to deepen the posture. Now if you do this, your right shoulder will lift off the floor, your, the back of the right arm will probably come off the floor, but we still don't want to be super tense in that area. So just make sure that there is like an element of being relaxed. We do want to see if we can draw the arm down. You can take the toe if you're there, you can take the toe, no problem. Either way, wherever you're at, we'll do that again. So left hand on left hip, be mindful that the hip stays down. Inhale here, then exhale, leg comes out to the right. Take it slow, be controlled with the breath, and then hold it here. So just make sure your right toes are gently facing the ceiling, gently pulling back. And then instead of thinking about getting the foot to the floor, why don't you think about drawing your right toes higher up towards the right ear. So it's that upward lift that really creates a, the big old stretch in the groin. And again, if your neck's okay, just turn and look over your left shoulder. Bit harder to keep the lower back pressing down into the floor, but do your best. A Little bit harder to keep that left hip rooted. Okay, and we're going to hold it for a count of five. So five, four, three, two, and one. So hold it here. Don't move that leg. Have a little look at your right leg. It's going to stay where it is, okay? We're going to release the strap. Now hold your right leg in the position it's in. 
and then see if you can draw that left hip down. So don't let the body roll over to the right. Immediately you're going to feel the work in your right abductor. So this is the inner right thigh muscles that we're trying to get at. Really good posture. Hold it. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. I know it hurts, but you're doing a great job. Okay, we're going to hold it here for a few more moments. Really working those inner thigh muscles. And then now as slowly as you possibly can, we're going to lift the right leg up to the ceiling with control and then we are going to take that leg out the strap and then you can straighten the legs and give the legs a little shake beautiful right this is the bit where I move around because we're going to do the left leg now all right so remember right leg can be bent or you could straighten right leg down the mat up to you depends on your back if you're straightening the right leg down the mat, gently work the right toes back and keep the right toes facing the ceiling. To begin with, let's put the left foot in the strap, lengthen the strap to the back of the left arm. Right hip, and we're gonna hold it here. This hamstring stretch is intense. You can deepen it by working those left toes back if you choose. Again, noticing if one side feels a bit different, taking your attention to the breath, making sure you still have that slow, steady rhythm. And just being mindful that you're not overly tense in the jaw, the shoulders, the arms. And if your leg is shaking, that's fine. <laughs> Don't worry about that, my leg's shaking a little bit. Got a bit of a shaky leg going on. Okay, so make sure that right hand is on that right hip. As soon as you feel that right hip lift, you've gone too far, bring that leg back to center a bit more. So big inhale here, then exhale, here we go. Leg very slowly with control comes out to the left. Okay. Then really glue right butt cheek down, press lower back into the floor. And then feel that lovely stretch inside of right leg, right thigh, working into the hip. And then if your neck's okay, you can turn and look over your right shoulder. Okay, so it's tricky, like even like, I've been doing this for a long time and I still find it super difficult to keep my right hip down in this posture right now. I can feel how the body wants to help me out. The body's like, no, Ashley, why are you putting yourself through this? I'm gonna roll over to the left and help you. And I'm like, no, don't do it. But we're constantly fighting that urge. It's, it's, you know, it's not something we do deliberately. Okay, a few more deep breaths here. And then inhale, let's bring it back up to center. All right, so here we go. Lengthen, same length, or if you're feeling crazy, shorten the strap. If you're shortening the strap, shoulder, back of the arm will probably lift. Just make sure that shoulder is relaxed and not overly tense. Right hand to right hip, you inhale, then exhale. Here we go again. Leg comes out to the left. Making sure that right hip, pesky right hip stays down. And if you have, um, you know, the ability to look over your right shoulder, please do. I mean, I've got a small neck injury, so I can't, but you look over the right shoulder if you can. And if you wanted to deepen the posture, pick your left toes higher up towards your left ear, so it's an upward lift. It's crazy how different one side can be compared to the other, like this is hard. My left leg is such a problem leg. All right, and then here we go. Left legs, oh, we'll hold it for five. Five, we can hold it for five anyway. Four, be a quicker five this time. Three, two, and one. More than five. Have a look at your left leg. Hold it there, we're gonna release the strap. Immediately, inner thigh muscles, Start complaining, but this is good for us, and then see if you can really work the right hip down to the floor. So it really wants to lift at this point, but quite strong in the right glute now. Push it down, hold it here. 
deep, slow breaths. Better than any weird inner fire machine at the gym, I swear. You just do this 10 times a day. Okay? And then as slowly as you can, inhale, leg comes up. Slowly, 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 slowly with control. And then take the foot out the strap. Should feel that. <laughs> take a cat stretch, point both toes down, the mat arms overhead, lengthen. And then exhale, hug your knees into your chest and rock from side to side and make some circles. So we definitely took our time over that posture. <laughs> 100% that was very like yinny of me but you know it's good for us we really took our time over that posture all right so come up into seated now and we're ready for this take your legs wide wide fold okay so with this you don't actually have to fold it might be enough for you to just sit like this absolutely fine just stay here as long as you're getting the stretch on the inner thighs toes gently pull back Toes face the ceiling at all times. If you are folding forward, the legs are gonna to wanna to roll inwards, but we are always externally rotating, making sure those toes at all times face the ceiling. Now, if you're struggling to sit upright, take your hands behind your back. You can use that to elongate the spine, otherwise, hands in front of you. Okay, lifting from the pelvis, we're gonna fold, so inhale, lift, and exhale. Walk, 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 walk those hands forward. You may come down onto forearms. You might not come down very far, that's okay. Whenever you're in your fold, let the head relax though. If you're coming down low enough, you can come forehead, I suppose, if you wanted, or you can come chin and chest if the chest bone touches the floor. Don't put your chin down <laughs> if the chest bone doesn't touch the floor. And then whenever you're at your sort of edge, I want you to just let the head go, relax. Toes always facing the ceiling. They really want to fall inwards, but just see if you can keep them facing upwards. And we're just going to have a little rest. A little rest here. Okay, so if I were to adjust you in this posture, if you are folded forward, I would come behind you and I would put my hands in your hip creases and I would roll your hips back. So if you are folding forward, just be mindful that you haven't like rolled so far forward that your bum is off the floor because that happens sometimes. So we want to be grounded. Steady breaths, few more moments here, not going to hold it all that long. We've got too much to do. <laughs> And then inhale, very slowly work your way back up to seated. Lovely. Now from here, we are going to take the soles of the feet together. So bound angle, exactly the same as we've done earlier. Lying, reclined bound angle, but sitting up. And it makes it a little bit more challenging. So we want the soles of the feet together. The knees, do not push your knees down. It will hurt your knees. So just let the knees be. This is a real... Uh, You've got to be patient with this posture. Now, if you want a slightly more restorative version, feet away from you, make more of a diamond with the legs. If you want to make this deeper, really work the heels in towards the groin, up to you and your hips. Now, take hold of your feet, if the feet are close to the groin, and open your feet up like a book. Eventually, as the hips open, see in the soles of the feet. And what we're working towards, at least in Ashtanga, is bringing the chin down to the floor and placing your belly on your feet. I'm not there yet, but that's where we're all moving towards. But for today, we'll take it a little bit more gently. So with the feet open, the knees where they're at, and this may be quite uncomfortable if your hips are tight, so just roll with it. You can stay up. And again, find that length in the spine and exhale, fold forward, leading with the chest, okay? So seeing if we can just lead with the che chest, propel the chin forward, and when you are in your fold, you can let the head relax. Please be careful with this posture. It is quite a lot for the, the knees sometimes, lower back. And take in those deep breaths. There is literally no shame in staying upright either. It's enough as it is. Okay, tricky posture. A few more moments. And then inhale, make your way back up into seated. And you can use the hands to bring the knees together if you want. 
and we are just going to make our way into all fours and we're going to come into wide child's pose so feet together knees as wide as the mat sink the bum down towards the heels get the bum and the heels as close together as possible before you walk the hands forward and lay the body down you can come chin and chest if it's comfortable forehead you can stay upright just do whatever passively opening up groin hips stretching into the lower back so it should feel quite nice And when you're ready, you can come up into all fours. We're going to do a cat cow. Yes. Even in a groin class, because I've got a version which works for the groin. So, come into all fours. Fingers spread underneath your hands. And we are going to take the right leg out to the right. <laughs> so, the right leg's at a 90 degree angle from the body and the toes are facing forward. Your left knee is underneath your hip. The hands are underneath the shoulders and really press down through that right foot. Get the right sole of the foot on the floor. Now we're gonna come through cat cow like normal and you're gonna be surprised at how more challenging this is, because I was. So as you inhale, lift the hips, lift the chest, look forward. All right, harder, much harder to find that lift. And on every inhale, you should feel a deep stretch on the inside of your right thigh, your right groin. And then as you exhale, tuck the hips round the back, press into the hands. So not too much difference here. Really lovely stretch in the shoulders. As you inhale, lift. Here we go. Oof. Press through the right foot as you lift. It's actually quite strong. <laughs> and then exhale rounds, okay? So take a couple of uh, movements like this. A couple of goes using your own breath. So the whole of the slow inhale lifts the hips, lifts the chest, look forward, feel that stretch in the inner thigh. And then the whole of the exhale rounds the back. Really tuck the chin in towards the chest here. Get that little stretch in the back of the neck as well. And keep going. Right. So I'm sure there are lots of versions of cat cows, but I think I only know like two. So <laughs> I might do like a cat cow class and go find some more. Okay. And then at the end of your next exhale, just come back to a flat back and then just step your right foot back. Your right knee is back underneath your right hip. So hopefully you felt that. We'll try the other side. So we're going to step out with our left foot this time. Just setting the posture up. You can wiggle about and find where is most comfortable for you. Just keep the right knee underneath the hip. Sole of the left foot on the floor, toes face forward. Press down through that left foot. Hands underneath the shoulders. And inhale, lift. It's very difficult to get the same sort of lift, for sure. And every lift, feeling that stretch from the inner left thigh. And then exhale, rounds. Inhale, lifts the hips, lifts the chest. Feeling that stretch groin. And then exhale round. So take a couple more goes of this. Not going to be doing it for as long today. Mostly just to get that little groin stretch. Not that we really need any more. <laughs> I feel like we're done. I could call this class off now. I feel like we've worked into the groin. We've got too much fun stuff to do though. Alright. Okay, amazing. Last, last one. Okay, and then at the end of your next exhale, come to a flat back and just step back into all fours. Now straight away, coming into downward dog, fingers spread, feet underneath, knees underneath the hips, feet tucked, hips up and back. You know it, I don't even know why I need to tell you anymore. You know downward dog, <laughs> You're doing a great job. Okay, so feet hip width apart and parallel, your head is relaxed, your head tilts back between your arms, and we're going to pedal the heels out. Well, you don't have to, but it feels quite nice to just pedal the heels out, making the pedaling slow. It doesn't matter if your knees are bent, it doesn't matter if the heels don't touch the floor, you just do what you want to do here. What we're trying to do is get the weight back into the legs, and we're also trying to sort of create a straight line from the hands, up the arms, up the spine, shooting out the back of the hips. If you push your hip back, as you push your heel towards the floor, you're going to draw a deeper stretch up towards the glute, top of the left leg, top of the right leg. 
<laughs> I still can't breathe through my nose. I'm bunged up today. Okay, lovely, then stop pedaling, just see if you can push those thighs to the back of the room, maybe tilt your hips up towards the ceiling. And then from here, yes, I know you love them, we are either going to step or jump our feet to the outside of our hands and we're going to lower the butt down and we're going to come into Malasana, a little yogi squat. Oh, it's very good for your groin. Okay, so feet can turn out, hands in prayer and then work the knees and the arms together. So we're really opening across the pelvis, sinking the hips down. Okay, so a hip posture, but also a groin posture. Now, if your hips are tight, if your groin's tight, your heels might be off the floor, that's okay. If you need to, you have the heels off the floor and then you can always bring your hands to the floor to support the posture if your balance is a bit weird, no problem. As the hips open up, the heels come down a bit easier. And we're just going to hold it here. A few things to be aware of. See if we can get away from doing that. Okay, it's, it's hard. But see if we can work the shoulders back and extend the spine up. Almost like there's a piece of string coming out the crown of our head lifting us. So keeping the chest lifted and avoiding folding forward. We don't want the upper body to be uh, too like compressed here. It's fun, isn't it? I <laughs> feel like this might be another one of my favourite postures of all time. Just very good foundation posture, can't beat it. I'm going to hold it here for a few more moments. Almost like we're trying to scoop the tailbone under as well, drawing the butt down. Honestly, I think I could just, I could hold this for another 10 minutes. We should do a challenge, we should do a how long can you hold this challenge, except I would be too worried that everyone's legs would fall off, including my own, so maybe not. Alright, and then we are going to come up to standing, so make this slow, okay, use the strength in the glutes, push yourself up, slow, and we're up, give your legs a shake, lovely job. Have a drink if you need a drink, give your legs a shake, you always punch your hips if you need to. It reminded me of the hip class we've done. <laughs> Hips and groin, they go together very well. Okay, so we're going to do some wide leg folds. We're going to do four of the Ashtanga versions. Two, well, two of these folds also incorporate the shoulders. We haven't done much with the shoulders, so it would be quite nice to open up into them just a little bit. So feet together, legs together at the front of your mat. And then we're going to take a step out with our right foot. So we're in a wide leg position. Now if you feel like you're slipping, just turn your toes in ever so slightly. You can have a little bend in the knees if you want, but we want to keep the legs strong. We're doing this predominantly for the groin. So hands on hips, inhale, lift, find some length, and then exhale, fold forward. Now take your fingertips in line with your toes. If you cannot get the hands to the floor, you can place your hands on blocks. You can take your legs a little wider as long as they feel strong, or you can bend the knees. Now before you fold, inhale, look forward, find some length, and then exhale, lower the crown of the head towards the floor. It doesn't have to touch the floor, it's just the closest thing towards the floor. Okay, now, if you have the room, you can move your hands further back between your legs, keep the elbows over the wrists, and keep the elbows in line with the shoulders, and you can use the hands to pull the body a bit closer towards the legs. Do not have your fingers facing backwards. <laughs> I see this all the time. I think it must be some, some like, I guess that forward folds are taught differently in every sort of style of yoga. In the style of yoga, I teach the fingers face forwards, not backwards. Better for your elbows. <laughs> and as well as stretching into the groin, we are also releasing into the lower back. So holding it here, nice, slow, steady breaths. Feeling the work in the back of the legs and really letting the neck relax as well, so no tension in the neck. Okay, then inhale, look forward, straighten the arms. Then exhale, take your hands to your hips. Inhale, come up to standing, so strengthen the legs. And then exhale, just pause here. This time, inhale, arms wide. And then exhale, hands to hips. We're going to keep the hands on the hips now. So inhale, lengthen, and then exhale, fold forward again. Hands stay on hips. Let the head relax once you're in your fold. And then just see if you can gently work the shoulder blades together. So we're opening up into the shoulders. 
They want to fall down, but sort of opposing that. Bringing the weight forward into the toes so we're not sinking back too heavy in the hips and feeling that huge stretch back of the legs, groin. And taking those few deep breaths. Really good for your lower back. I don't know about you, but this feels pretty good for my lower back. I haven't done much <laughs> in the last week. Okay, lovely. Then inhale, come all the way up to standing. Strength in the legs. Exhale, pause here. Now inhale, arms wide. And then exhale, interlace your hands behind your back. So hands are going to stay on the back till we're in the fold. And once we're in the fold, we'll take them overhead. So inhale, lengthen. And then exhale, fold forward. Again, doesn't matter if the head comes nowhere near the floor. Just make sure you feel stable. Let the head relax once you're down. And then when you're in your fold, your arms come up and over your head. All right, lovely job. So weight forward into the toes, breath steady, hips high, head low. Really feeling in that work in the legs, but got a little shoulder stretch in. Got one in this class. Okay, working the shoulder blades together. Few more moments here. And then back all the way up on the inhale, strengthen the legs. Beautiful. And then take your hands to your hips. Inhale, lengthen, chest up. And then this time, exhale, fold. See if you can take big toes first, two fingers and thumbs. Please keep your thumbs off the mat because if you fall, you will break your thumbs. So thumbs do not go on the mat. Your wrists are gonna stay somewhere over the feet so there's a real upward lift. Your elbows are not falling out, they're gently pulling in towards the shins. Inhale, look forward, lengthen. And then exhale, fold. Head down and you can use a the fingers around the legs to ease the body closer and just see if you can keep your shoulders rolling up towards your waist so your shoulders aren't hunching by your neck. <laughs> Honestly, I thought being upside down would clear my nose out but it's defo not helping. So a few more moments here, keep those steady, if you're lucky enough to breathe through your nose, keep those steady breaths through your nose. I bet I won't be able to taste food now, it's going to suck. <laughs> Lovely. Exhale, hands to hips. Inhale, slowly come up. Now stay here. Stay here. Turn your heels in. You know. Your feet now are facing the corners of the long side of the mat and then sink your butt down. Goddess pose, hands in prayer. Whew. Okay. This was cheeky, wasn't it, putting this in? Now, a couple of things that happen in this, the knees drop in. Don't let your knees drop in. Better to keep your knees over your ankles and come up a little bit higher so we get that real like openness across the pelvis. Eventually, sinking down so the thighs are more parallel to the floor, but more important to keep the knees over the ankles than it is to get the thighs dead parallel. Also, do not fold forward. <laughs> Keep the spine lifted, pelvis tucks under, chest is broad, hold it here for five, I'm right there with you, <laughs> four, deep breath, sink a little bit lower, three, very good for the groin, two, keep pulling those knees back over the ankles, and one, slowly come up. Then step, one step to the front of your mat. <laughs> I don't think I can do it. <laughs> oh, okay, that was, that was not graceful <laughs> at all. All right, doing a good job. Okay, so we are gonna, we're gonna have a go at this posture. I wasn't sure if we were, uh, no. When, mm, let's do it. <laughs> so I might as well do it soon as I'm just like, don't know what to do. We'll do this posture. We're only gonna do it once. We're not gonna have uh, too much of an in-depth look at it. So stand on your left leg. I'll do another class for that. Left hand to left hip. It's exactly the same as the lion posture we were doing earlier, but from standing. So raise your left leg, right leg, right leg off the floor. Take hold of your right shin. Or if you have the room, if you have the hamstrings, take hold of your right toe and extend the leg, okay. 
So remember your drishti, your point of concentration. Standing leg is strong. A few more moments here. Keep that right shoulder pulling back as well. So don't let the right shoulder too much. And then take the leg out to the right. So opening up across the pelvis, exactly the same as the lion postures we were doing. So if you have hold of the shin, you'll do exactly the same with the shin. Feeling that work in the groin, if you have the balance, turn and look over your left shoulder. Also very strong in the left glute. Okay, and then inhale back to centre. And then we're going to leave that horrible bit out because we don't need it today. Just release the leg. All right. So a modified version of a posture called Utita Hasa Padangusasana. You don't have to remember that. It's just a very good way to get into the inner thigh. So we'll change sides. Standing on the right leg, right hand to right hip, and then taking hold of the left shin or the left big toe and extend the leg. Okay, if you have the toe, keep drawing that left shoulder back. If you have the shin, keep standing up nice and tall. Good place to be with the shin. Holding it here for a few moments. And then take the leg out to the left. Just make sure the body doesn't twist with it, so you want to keep those hips facing forward. And if that means not taking the leg out as far, absolutely fine. Now if you have the balance, turn and look over your right shoulder. And then come back to centre and then very simply just release the leg. Okay, give your legs a shake. I will do a balance class because I feel like they are tricky but I'm sure you've done very well. So come to the front of your mats, we're gonna make our way onto the floor because we're ready to do some circles. So legs together, we'll come through a sun salutation. So inhale, arms up, look up. Exhale, fold, drop the head, forward fold. Inhale, look forward, lengthen. Your choice, exhale, step or jump back to plank and lower. Inhale, back bend. Exhale, dog. And from downward dog, make your way into seated however you're working. And then come onto your backs and hug your knees into your chest. We are ready. That's why I wasn't sure whether to do the last posture. I was like, I know I'm gonna run out of time. I always run out of time. My time keeps, I've got so much I wanna do with everyone. That's the problem. All right, so here we go. Legs down. So take your left leg straight down the mat. All right. So a little bit of effort in that left leg just to keep the toes facing the ceiling. Take your right leg down the mat, actually, as well. Both legs down the mat. I haven't done these for a while. So hands either side of the body, palms down. To be fair, you can take your arms wide as well if you want. We're just basically trying not to let the body rock from side to side. So. Just put your arms in a place where you feel like you're going to be the most stable and then point the right toes down the mat. Am I going to kick my water bottle over? <laughs> oh, I might do. This is a posture where water bottles go flying, so just make sure there's nothing around you. So as you inhale, raise the right foot up towards the ceiling and point the toes. So the right leg straight, left leg straight down the mat, toes point, pulling back and right foot is vertical and straight to po toes pointed. We're here. It's going to get better. All right, so we're gonna make some circles with this leg. Super good for our groin, very good for our hip flexors, hips. So take a big inhale here. Then as you exhale, take the right leg all the way out to the right. Swoop it round without touching the floor. So it's lined up with the left leg. And inhale, lift it back up to center. Okay, so it's like a half circle. Exhale, leg comes out to the right, swoop it round without touching the floor. And then inhale, bring it back to center. So we're lifting, not kicking. Exhale out to the right, swoop it round without touching the floor. And inhale, lift up. Nice controlled movements. Exhale out to the right, sweep it round without touching the floor and inhale, raise that leg up. So don't let the body rock. Exhale out to the right, groin, swoop it round without touching the floor, 
and then inhale back up, hip flexors. Exhale out to the right, sweep it round without touching the floor, big circles, then inhale all the way back up. Exhale, leg comes out to the right, sweep it round without touching the floor, and inhale back up. Exhale out to the right, sweep that leg round without touching the floor, inhale back up and stop at the top. Okay. So this next one's a bit more challenging. We're going to do the other side. We're going to do the same leg. We've got the same leg up. We're doing the opposite way. So the right leg is straight, right toes are pointed. So this time, as you exhale, take that right leg straight down without touching the floor. Out to the right. Here we go. Here's the fun part. And then inhale, lift that leg up. It's the inductors. Now take that leg straight down. Sweep it out to the right without touching the floor. And then inhale, lift that leg up. Exhale, straight down. Out to the right. Inhale, lift. Exhale, down. Out to the right. And then inhale, back up with control. Exhale, down. Out to the right. Inhale, back up. Exhale down, out to the right, inhale back up, exhale down, out to the right, inhale lift, last one, exhale down, out to the right, and then inhale back up and then stop and then hug your knees in and make whatever movements feel good. All right, so definitely feeling that in the adductors, the hip flexors, those circles, they're fabulous. All right, so do whatever movements you need to do. And now we are moving on to the other side. So, <laughs> both legs straight down the mat. Some gentle effort in the right leg to keep the toes pulling back, toes facing the ceiling, then place your arms either side of the body or you can take the arms wide, palms down. Just make sure your arms are stable and strong to stop the body from rocking side to side. So really trying to isolate this movement in the hip, the groin. And then point your left toes and as you inhale, raise your left leg up towards the ceiling. Okay, so we'll start with the less brutal version first. Okay, so big inhale here. And then as you exhale, take left leg out to the side. Sweep it round without touching the floor. And then inhale back up. So slow controlled movements. Exhale out to the side. Swoop it round, big half circles. And then inhale back up. Exhale out, swoop it round. And then inhale back up. So use your breath to help you slow it down. Exhale out. Sweep that leg round. And then inhale back up. Exhale out. Sweep it round. And then inhale up. Really point those left toes. Exhale out. Sweep it all the way around without touching the floor and then inhale slowly back up. Swoop that leg round without touching the floor. Then inhale back up. Exhale out. Swoop it round and then lift that leg up. Stop here, stop here. We're going to turn. <laughs> My leg is shaking. We're going to do it in the other direction. So as you exhale, Take that leg straight down to the floor. Take it out to the left. And then inhale back up. Really working those adductor muscles. Take that leg down. Out to the left. And then inhale back up. Exhale down. Out to the left. And then inhale back. Exhale, straight down, out to the left, wide half circles, and then inhale, back up. Exhale, down, out to the left, 
Inhale back up. Exhale down. Out to the left. And then inhale back up. Exhale down. Out to the left. Inhale back up. Two more. Exhale down. Out to the left. Inhale back up, last one. You can do it. Exhale down, out to the left. Inhale back up and then just don't do it anymore. Hug your knees into your chest. Take a cat stretch if you want to take a cat stretch. Right, they are fun like synchronized swimmers. Lovely, 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 lovely. Okay, so just hugging your knees into your chest here. Honestly, you should be feeling it in your groin. You should feel definitely quite a lot of leftover sensation in like your thigh muscles, your hips. Huge postures today. Everything we've done has been really targeted for the inner thigh muscles and the groin. And we're just gonna finish with a little, a little twisty twist. And actually this might be quite nice because it's the legs are sort of coming inward instead. So it might be quite a nice little counter stretch. So take your feet to the floor. We're going to cross the right knee over the left. So this is, this should feel quite nice. So we've been doing a lot of external rotation with the hips and now we're rolling the, the thighs inward by crossing the right knee over the left. We're going to move our bum over towards the right ever so slightly. Arms out wide, palms down. Inhale here, then exhale. Legs are just going to fall over to the left. My back just clicked a lot then. <laughs> Okay, so line twist of the right knee on top of the left. Just making sure that right shoulder's down if your neck's okay, turning and looking over the right shoulder and then really letting the body just relax. So another uh, quite a deep line twist. You've got it lower back, right hip, right glute. Okay, lovely, then inhale back to center. And we'll just square those hips up, uncross your legs. We'll do the same thing on the other side. So left knee over right. We'll move the butt over towards the left. Just a few inches, giving us more room. Inhale here, then exhale, legs can come over towards the right. And then turn and look over your left shoulder. Keep the left shoulder down and relax in as much as possible into the posture. and then we're going to uncross the legs and we're going to come into Shavasana. Now, you can have the legs straight, you can have the legs bent. And you can bring the soles of the feet together and let the knees fall out sideways, but I kind of feel like we've done enough groin stuff. But something that I quite like to do, and you don't have to, you might hate it, is I like to take my knees as wide as the mat after classes like this and let my knees fall in towards one another. Again, it's the opposite movement to what we've been doing this whole time. But you just find a line position you can be comfortable in. You can place your hands either side of the body, let the palms face up. And we're just going to spend a minute here or so just letting the breath come back to normal and letting the body relax. Okay, so no need to um, be engaging any muscles now. Everything is super chill, everything's heavy. Just falling into the floor. And there's no need to control the breath. Your breath comes back to normal. stomach rumbling I'm hungry so I feel like this is a good point to like just come out so if you want to stay in Shavasana or wherever you're at for a little bit longer please do a couple more minutes is absolutely perfect otherwise just 
bring some movement into your fingers and toes, extend the legs down the mat, arms overhead, lengthen, and then when you're ready, just hug your knees into your chest and take a, take a few moments rocking the back out. I, call, I called the class off early because I'm hungry. I'm like, no more shavasana, I need to go get some breakfast. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed everything we've done today. Super, super good for our groins. Um, I hope it wasn't too, too uh, eye-watering. And then I will see you next time when I see you. I've got good morning yoga tomorrow. I feel like we might focus on our ankles and our feet. So if you want to do that, you can come do that. It's very early though. And uh, have a lovely day and I will see you. Yeah, it was a little bit ouch, wasn't it? <laughs> and I'll see you next time, right? Bye. Oh, well, can't press finish.